Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at Senua Saga Hellblade 2 on the RX 7900 XTX. We're going to take a look at 4K native with maxed out settings. We'll also take a look at some FSR. And I've also gone through all the graphical settings to point out some of the most demanding ones you can tweak to gain quite a bit more performance back at very minimal visual quality loss. So let's begin with native 4K, 100% resolution scale, high graphical preset. So we begin pretty good here with 60 FPS and then very quickly we drop to the high 40s. That's one thing you're gonna see uh, quite a lot in this game is that depending on what's happening on the screen your performance can vary up and down. For example we're entering this area with uh, volumetric effects and we've dropped to the low 40s now because volumetric effects are pretty costly in this game. But uh, I will show you some of the settings you can tweak to kind of cope with that a little bit. The level of detail though is pretty insane. Like, <laughs> look at all the rocks and everything. It looks, everything looks so good. The lighting, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. But what we can do now is look at some combat where it's not as peaceful and it has its own challenges with its own effects and also volumetric effects as well. So let's take a look at some combat and we'll stay at native 4K with maxed out settings, 100% resolution scale. Let's take a look. The one whose voice cuts through the chaos. He is her next sign, the next step on her path. She will bathe in blood, her sword will sing, and she will free him. Or die trying. She has a sword. She's like Well, despite the ups and downs in performance, especially during combat, one thing that I'm going to give the game credit for is that the frame times actually are rather consistent. 1% lows are actually also pretty good. I personally haven't run into any stuttering issues. I've now played the game on a 7800X 3D and in this PC I'm using a 5900X. The game is really, really smooth. The only stuttering issues that I've run across are traversal and they're very sudden. It only happens when you go from one area to the next. I can't say that I've experienced any stutters, especially during combat, which would be very annoying. That aspect, the game's been pretty good. The other thing is that the game does not have FSR 3 frame generation, unfortunately. I'm not sure why, because it should be fairly easy to add FSR 3 on Unreal Engine 5 games, but it's not there. I know that there is mods out there that can add FSR 3. I don't have those at the moment, but there is a way to do it. Now with that said, we do have FSR 3 super resolution, so we can check that out. Because I have a feeling we're going to go beyond 60 FPS with uh, FSR super resolution. So, let's check it out. Well guys, there you have it. We were able to gain a huge amount of performance back with FSR set to quality. We went from the mid 40s of FPS at native 4K to the mid 70s. That's an insane gain in uh, FPS uh, just for using FSR. Now, FSR in this game does actually a pretty good job from what I've seen. There is maybe a tiny bit of flicker, but compared to some other games, I think FSR actually does a really good job here. DLSS does a really good job as well. I would say DLSS does a bit of a better job, but even with DLSS, I've noticed that it does actually blur a little bit of the finer details like grass and stuff like that. XCSS, on the other hand, is not very good from what I've seen. Uh, it, it does add quite a bit of blur, but also flicker, which personally I find very annoying. TSR works really well, but I think FSR is a solid choice and you can play the game at 4K above 60 with FSR set to quality. And this is one of the more demanding parts of the game, these combat areas I've found. So let's go ahead and take a look at the outside area and then I'll give you my optimized settings and uh, see if we can get even more performance. Well, we're back outside now in the open area and we're close to 80 FPS with FSR set to quality. So again, 
huge games. We were in the mid 40s, maybe 50 FPS, and now we're close to 80. That is a very good gain in performance just for using FSR quality, and the game still looks amazing. Now I'd like to show you some of the settings I found to be very costly and some of the tweaks you can make to gain a pretty good bump in performance. So let's take a look at the settings. All right, so we're going to begin here with native 4K, 100% resolution scale, maxed out graphical settings, and we appear to be getting 57 FPS. The first setting I found to be very taxing is shadow quality. And if we go from high to low, we went from 57 FPS to 65 FPS. That is a pretty massive jump. But if we go to medium instead of low, we only lose about 1 to 2 FPS. So I personally recommend shadow quality to medium. The next setting is global illumination quality. So at high, we're at 63 FPS. And if we go to low, we go all the way up to 68 FPS. That's a pretty decent jump. And if we go to medium, we only lose one FPS. So I personally recommend staying on medium global illumination quality. The next and final setting is volumetrics. If we're at 67 FPS on high, by dropping to low, we go all the way up to 77, 76 FPS. That's a massive gain. But if we go to medium, we only lose about another FPS, so 75 FPS. I recommend volumetrics on medium, and then everything else can stay on high. Foliage detail is another setting you can play with, but I don't think it's really worth it. For example, if you go from high to low, you only gain like one or two FPS, and you do lose a lot of foliage detail on the ground. I mean, look at this is on low, this is on medium, and then if you go on high, it's even richer. So I recommend leaving everything else on high, but shadow, GI, and volumetrics to medium. As you can see here in this side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, we have maxed out high preset 4K 100% resolution scale. And on the right, we have the same, except we've set shadow quality, global illumination, and volumetrics to medium. And we're able to gain another 34% more FPS averages. That's actually really, really good. On top of that, we also have similar gains on the 1% lows as well, which leads to a very smooth experience. So I would recommend setting these settings to medium, no matter the type of GPU you have, because as you can see, there isn't a huge difference in visual quality. Personally, I can't really tell. But what if we were to enable FSR on top of the optimized settings? Well, let's check it out. So we end up going from the 70s close to 90 FPS, sometimes even above that with the optimized settings on top of FSR quality. Well, let me know what you guys think. Give the video a like if you liked it and consider subscribing if you want to see more content. But as you can see, there is some tweaks you can make and gain a lot more performance and you have FSR as well. If we had frame generation, we could probably go as high as 140 FPS probably. So that would have been cool. But either way, I think this turned out pretty well. Well, let me know what you guys think. I will see you in the Should next one. Starvation. Peace. I will come with you, but this changes nothing. Not expect any gratitude from me or my father. How could I? You still haven't told me what she is. Iltoga. So many questions. She's giant. They're waking at sundown. Iltoga. A giant, a cursed land. But now she has help. Fagrima knows this land. Many have tried to fight them, but all have failed. They're immortal. Maybe the gods can kill them, but there are no gods in these lands. The giants, they hide by day and hunt at night. Now you may think, well, at least there's some respite by day. But know this, the nights grow longer. And come winter, there is no day, just an endless night. Soon the time of man will end.